Yeah, we've been waiting to get after after for a while, and I think obviously for a team getting the first one uh, puts us the crowd in it and gets us a little more comfortable. Uh, we like playing with the lead, and I mean, uh, yeah, we shut it down from there. Front left, Mike. Uh, Matthew, just how good was Bob tonight? And, and you know, everybody all week has been talking about his preparation, his work ethic, and all he does to prepare for these games, and for him to be off a week like all of you, but not let that affect his sharpness at all. How impressive was it? Yeah, he's uh, he's just been unreal. His preparation, like you said, is incredible. Um, you know, his work ethic, his character, like everything you want um, in a teammate, especially a goalie, he, he, uh, he is everything. Um, very impressed with the way he played tonight, um, you know, especially early. Um, but honestly, through the whole night, he was really good, and um, he was there for us. Front right. Matthew, Tim Reynolds with the AP. This, this franchise, ancient history is what it is, but this franchise has never led a final before, never led a finals game by more than one goal before tonight. It's just one, but how good does it feel compared to what you guys were fighting last year? I mean, yeah, like you said, it's just one. Um, obviously, we uh, really wanted to take care of the first one, especially on home ice, and now just looking forward to, to game two. But um, I guess it, it feels good, always feels good to win, but we've got a lot of things to uh, to clean up and to get better at. Um, you know, they, they played well. Um, you know, we played well enough to, to win, just really grinded it out, played really well defensively. I thought our defense did an unreal job um, tonight with uh, – just everything in their game, and uh, but yeah, no, it feels feels good to win the first one. But quick uh, quick turnaround here in a couple of days, and try to get to game two. Left side, second row. Yeah, Matthew, uh, sort of build upon that. You guys saying that you guys did just not to win, just being able to execute on the chances you guys did have. I've obviously Edmonton in terms of shot attempts were able to, they had the majority of it, but for you guys to execute specifically that second goal, yeah. what did you see on that one and the year, the year goal and just how you guys were able to set that up and execute when you guys did have chances? Yeah, I think the second one, um, we had a little bit of room uh, in the neutral zone to, to get through. Um, Benny made a really really good play and kind of chipping it in but chipping it into himself knowing that he had a chance to get it first and uh, made a great play to throw it out front and I was right on right to Erod and um, great shot um, and big goal obviously I always want to get the get that next goal but I just think uh, you know coming in second period after you know we weren't uh, too crazy about our first um, you know to come out with a couple good shifts early and get that one it was it was big left side fourth row Matthew, uh, Edmonton, Edmonton goes over on the power play. What was your perspective on what you guys did on the kill tonight? Uh, well, I was not out there. I was on the bench, um, and I saw a lot of commitment blocking shots, um, strong on clears, getting in lanes. Um, you know, they had some great looks. Uh, Bob made some great saves, and uh, yeah, no, it, it was they they had good power plays and we had good penalty kills. Like that's just that's just sometimes just how it is. Even though they, um, you know, they didn't they didn't capitalize on. It. I think our guys deserve a lot of credit for that. But you know, they made some good plays. But I think you know a lot of desperation from us, and it was really good to see. And really proud of the PK and and those players. They did a great job for us. Front left, George. <laughs> hey Carter. Hey Matthew. Um, Quick question, uh, Car uh, Chris Knobloch was just up here, and he said, we know Florida is going to be better, can be better. Do you guys feel that? I mean, you've got a nice nice win game one, but can you be better in game two in moving forward? Yeah, I think uh, definitely we can be better. There's always things uh, we can improve on, and I think after a week, I mean, we'll take a win any way we can get it. But, uh, yeah, obviously they – kind of outshot us, had a lot more chances than us, and we shut it down, played good defensively, but yeah, there's lots of things that we can improve on. We're kind of getting to know our opponent after the first game and feeling them out, and it's just nice to get the win after the first game. Back right. Yeah, Carter, um, I'm just curious what's going through your mind when you see Barkov carrying the puck through the neutral zone on your first goal there, uh, and then beyond that, what you can say about Barkov's game in general tonight, you know, Three for three on the penalty kill. He's a big part of that as well. Yeah, I mean, Barky's uh, our leader and our captain, and he's such a force on the ice. I mean, he covers so much ice. Uh, I mean, it's really easy to play with him. Uh, I mean, I just kind of go back, and he gets the puck. He always seems to get a stick on the puck defensively and break the puck out, and that's kind of what he did on the goal. He was in a good position, starting low, and 
made a great play through the neutral zone and drove the medal. He's, he's so big and so fast and makes such good plays that uh, it's easy to play with him. And I just kind of just went to the net and put it on my stick. And I mean, uh, he's been a force all playoffs. And uh, he's such a huge part of our team and affects the game so much in so many different ways. And uh, we love having him. We'll take three more questions front left. Uh, for Chucky, uh, just speaking on your line mate, Sam Bennett, tonight, looked like he was flying out there. An excellent game from where we were sitting. Just wanted to get your thoughts on how he played tonight. Yeah, thought he thought he played really well. Thought he was skating really well. Thought he was physical um, when he needed to be. Um, you know, just all in all, his I think his greatest you know asset as a player is he's so hard to play against. Um, I have been lucky enough not to have to play against him a ton, so. Um, but you know, I know just playing with him, he's he's strong on pucks. He was good on draws tonight. Um, yeah, he seemed like he when he's skating like that through the neutral zone, he's he's a force, and his back checks were good, and didn't spend a, a too much time in the D zone a lot because of him. So um, thought he played great tonight, and um, yeah, uh, definitely a bright spot for our team. Left side, second row. Matthew, we just heard uh, Carter give a lot of credit to Barkov on his goal, but what is it about Carter who that allows him to? come up big in these situations over and over again? Yeah, I just think, you know, a lot of it is is reading the game very well. Um, you know, you got to be in the right positions. Um, you have to think the game very well. Um, he does all that and then has the skill and the shot to, you know, one of the few guys in the league that I know it wasn't a, a crazy shot on the goal, but, you know, he's one of the few guys in the league that can score from distance and score from places that just – the rest of us can't score from. So um, very talented player, very smart, um, plays really well, has great chemistry with those guys. And I thought, you know, their line, as much as they're responsible defensively, obviously comes up with a huge goal, but um, can make a ton of great plays, all three of them. So I thought they were all awesome tonight. One more question, front right. Carter, this one's for you. Um, it seems like compared to this point where you were last year, you guys were very much able to kind of weather the challenges from what the times the Oilers were kind of pinning you in your own end and you're kind of you, you guys just looked like you belonged a little bit more I mean what what's your confidence level in the team now compared to what it was last year uh, I think last year going into it I mean we were, had a lot of confidence and I think uh, we kind of ran out of gas last year and with a lot of guys, it was their first time going that far. And I mean, uh, yeah, we were kind of still learning, I think. And I think last year we did a lot of learning, and this year too. And I think kind of we kind of know what it takes this year. And uh, we were so close last year. We were three wins away. And I mean, we know how challenging it is, the ups and downs of playoffs and the grind of it. And I think uh, that kind of makes us more equipped this year for our team. It gives me more confidence for sure. Brad Rolf and maybe even Jake Maurice for the Florida Everblades three-peat. They uh, won the Kelly Cup for third state times. My kid's been in pro hockey two years. He has two rings. <laughs> uh, uh, possibly unbearable it's going to be at my house. <laughs> but congratulations. I think they tied it late and won in overtime, and uh, they had to fight their way into the playoffs this year. I don't care what league you're in or what level you're at. If you're going to win a championship three straight years, that's, that's darn impressive. But well done, lads. We'll start with questions. Right side, second row, Jameson. Uh, coach, so many times in these playoffs, Bob has kind of grown accustomed to maybe facing six, seven shots in a period. How impressed were you with how he adapted to a new style of game here in game one? I think that's the game that over time most goaltenders are used to, the high, higher volume, more consistency in the – there certainly was that through the first two. Um, but that, that's truly the advantage for us of having a guy that's – seen it all at this point in his career he's had quiet times he's had very very busy nights and uh, he's clearly capable of operating at a high level in both right side front row paul the what, what is the i guess the value to a coach when a guy like matthew can come in here and say they played well we played well enough to win we had to grind it out when there's an understanding from yeah. the players that they know there's things, even though they just won a game 3 nothing, there's things they can get better at. Yeah, they, there's an understanding of, of – they've seen our game enough. What's this one tonight? 100. 100, right? I think we banged out 103 last year. They have a, they've had an opportunity to see us play, play well, things that we're good at. Um, so we've got lots of room to improve, which is the positive for us tonight. 
Left side, second row. Yeah, Paul, uh, you mentioned obviously wanting to stay out of the box, but three for three on the penalty kill. What did you see from the group? And specifically, Kevin Stenlin and just the value that he has brought on the yeah. PK and being able to have him go up, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with McDavid, et cetera, and well, they, be able to do what he did. They, they've been consistent. Like, those killers have been consistent in my game. And then there's night where you will say that the driver of it is the players, but tonight the driver of it was Sergey. So, but that's all part of it, right? There's rarely are you going to play a, a team with a power play like that. I think the other one close to it probably coming in would have been Tampa, right? The, those elite shooters that uh, that you're not getting through that penalty kill without your goaltender at some point having to be the difference. Left side, front row. Front row, left, yeah. Um, Work with me. I'm, I'm Turn trying. into a pumpkin at midnight here, people, so get him in quick. Me too. Very it's late. Um, Sergei Bobrovsky, was that as big a game you've seen him play in, 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 the, in the two years here? And I know you've oh. said that when Bob's not, you can feel if it's going to be a good night for Bob just like early on, and it seemed like no, that first no, shift. No, because he ripped one off the served the pizza on the first one, right? Cracked it with his head. Then he was dialed, maybe, I don't know. Um, so this is all contextual, you know, in the environment of the Stanley Cup Finals, that was a, an elite game for sure. I think the game in Dallas was the one that you, you know, I mean, we gave up 15 rush chances in about the first four minutes and he stopped all of them. So that was, that was his special game. Right side, fourth row. Yeah, I think it was Carter Verhage who said you guys like playing with the lead. That may sound obvious, but what is it about your team that makes them so comfortable in a game like that where that team pushes the way they did? Yeah, so I liked our third period. That, that's the piece, and I liked the entire chunk of it. I'm not saying I liked it because we dominated. That's not, the again, the context that we're in. We have a two-goal lead, and um, it would be run about probably legitimately 205 then he's he's coming out of the net at 220 so 205 and six on five and the shots are seven six I liked I liked our third and I liked our third period in game six against the Rangers kind of the same the same situation that we played that I think that's important to be able to do that um, especially sometimes in these games in the tight games and I think it took us a while to I don't know, loosen up isn't the right word, but um, sometimes the, if you if the the team that scores first early doesn't have the advantage because it, it it releases the the other team's down. Now you start going right. The the pressure is broken a little bit, and so we score early, but we're not in control of the game. So there's that tension. I think it took us a little while to work through that. We'll take two more for coach Thank front you. left. Uh, Paul, on that on that point, um, you, you, those first two periods, we're not used to seeing the shot volume against you right. the way it was. Like, w what was going on there, and and just how much better can you get? I mean, you get the victory. That's got to be great and uh, confidence building. Well, we're going to find out how much better we can get if we play our game. And again, so I understand why we have to operate in extremes. Right, so the idea though, but if we just play our game, we win seven nothing. It's like no, right? So that they played a very strong game. I thought they moved well. I thought their transition game was really quick. Uh, we would have expected that. So there's areas in that that I think that we can improve. And then it's going to be a grinder. It's, it's the exact same thing. I mean, maybe that you would think that if you're at Edmonton, because uh, we can play a much get better game next game and lose. The shooters are just too good on both teams, right? So we get the, the one odd man earlier, and it's in the back of the net. We, got, we found the slot hole once it's in the back of the net. So even in a even shot game with the same expected goals, you can win by four or lose by four. It's just that's how good these guys are. Last question, second row on the right. I guess you're used to it by now, but another big goal by Carter Berhage. It's early, I mean. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm used to it, I guess. but. He is an unusual performer, that man. He is so good in the most intense and um, almost chaotic play. He, he can raise that level. I, I, don't, I don't know that I have much to say about it because I don't know that I fully understand it. Clearly, if there was something there I could pass along to somebody else, I would do that as well. That guy, that guy's a gamer. I think I, I, I said that about Matthew last year with some 
off-color language in it, but this year, he's a gamer. Like, he truly is on the puck, and I think he plays. I, th I, th I think maybe what I love the most is that it was not an easy path to the National Hockey. They had to fight for all of it to get there, and I think he trained himself to be wired in games the entire game. And that's why when he gets into the bigger games, that's that's how he operated. The, he and, and, and Gustav Forsling are similar in that. They had to work and try and compete and fight. They're both, he played in the East Coast League. Like he, he had to fight his way here. So when the when it's wired and it's on, that's his wheelhouse.